Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers obstruction, reasonable suspicion, and hindering, and is brought to us by Police State New Jersey's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. And, as you watch this episode, please keep in mind that all text that appears in the footage of the interaction was added by Mr. State before uploading the video. On January 4th, 2019, the owner of the Police State New Jersey YouTube channel, who we will refer to as Mr. State, was filming outside the Richard C. Clement Law Enforcement Center in Toms River, New Jersey, when he was approached by Officer Frank Moschella of the Toms River Police Department, who began to question Mr. State about what he was doing. It should be noted that all of the text that you will see appear on screen is from the original video. How's it going? Good. What are we doing? Taking some pictures? Work. Working on a story for the township? We're working on a story for the township. Well, about the township for, for me. For you? Yes. What are you making a documentary? Um, it's a new story. A new story? Yeah. You have ID? I always have ID. Okay, can you provide that? No. You can do whatever you want, but as far as uh, I just need to identify who you are. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. Uh, I do, sir. No, you don't. Yes, I do. And what law is that? Well, it came in as a suspicious person. Anytime okay. we investigate as to somebody calling in about suspicious, we need to at least identify who it is we spoke to. You're not in trouble in any way, shape, or form. Okay, then I don't need to give ID. Well, you do. Because what law is that? To know who you are. What law is I'm that? I'm investigating a crime. It's actually called obstruction if you fail to provide wrong. documentation. No, sorry, quote the, not wrong. Quote that Quote that statute. Quote obstruction. No, apparently you don't. Officer Muschella tells Mr. State that he could be charged with obstruction for refusing to provide his identification as requested. According to Section 2C29-1 of the New Jersey Code, quote, A person commits an offense if he purposely obstructs, impairs, or perverts the administration of law or other governmental function, or prevents or attempts to prevent a public servant from lawfully performing an official function by means of flight, intimidation, force, violence, or physical interference or obstacle, or by means of any independently unlawful act. New Jersey courts have interpreted this statute in a limited manner that only prohibits conduct that involves any of the specifically identified actions. But, in turn, they have taken a broader view of what constitutes lawfully performing an official function. For example, in the 2006 case of State v. Crawley, the Supreme Court of New Jersey held that, quote, a defendant may be convicted of obstruction when he flees from an investigatory stop, despite a later finding that the police action was unconstitutional. When a police officer is acting in good faith and under color of his authority, a person must must obey the officer's order to stop. Similarly, in the 2007 case of State v. Williams, the same court concluded that, quote, under New Jersey's obstruction statute, when a police officer commands a person to stop, or as in this case, orders him to place his hands on his head for a pat-down search, that person has no right to take flight or otherwise obstruct the officer in the performance of his duty. However, because New Jersey does not have a stop and identify statute, simply refusing to provide your name or identification to an officer cannot constitute obstruction, because doing so is not a quote-unquote independently unlawful Awful act. In the 2020 case of Bryant versus Camden County Police Department, the Superior Court of the New Jersey Appellate Division determined that an individual could not be convicted for refusing to turn over his identification to a police officer, explaining that, quote, the confrontation was not initiated on the belief Bryant was suspected of violating a motor vehicle law, so he had the right to refuse to turn over his identification. We do not envision a prudent person would believe there was a reasonable basis to arrest Bryant for obstruction for merely not turning over his identification. Bryant, committed no unlawful act to impede the investigation. To rule otherwise gives law enforcement without a reasonable basis the right to demand that a person provide identification and charge that person under the obstruction statute for not complying. Given the case law on this statute, a court would almost certainly determine that Mr. State did not violate the obstruction statute by refusing to provide his ID. But it is possible that an individual could be convicted of obstruction if they responded to an unlawful but good faith request for identification with flight and intimidation, force, violence, physical interference, or another unlawful act. Sir, look, I'm not looking I have to thing. commit an unlawful act and prevent you from performing your unlawful duty to be well, in violation of yeah, obstruction. I'm currently right now. So what's the unlawful act? Right now, it's, uh, it's uh, came in as a suspicious Okay, person. and and what statute is, is suspicious? It has nothing to do with it. Yes, it I'm does. What's the law? To determine what's going on. So all I'm, I'm taking pictures in public. Who you are. You're telling me you're doing something. Okay. That's fine, but I need to verify who you are. No, you don't. So in the event that something turns into something, I at least can say, all right, I went out and I spoke with this person. You're making this more difficult than it needs to be. No, you are. Not really. You can come out and say, good morning, sir. How are you doing? Taking pictures? Enjoying your First Amendment right to take pictures in public? Well, what was the first thing that I said to you today? 
What are you doing? I said, no. I said, how are you, sir? Okay, how are you? Did I not say that to you? Yeah, you did. So you just asked me what did I do, and I already told you what I said. Okay. I said, how are you? And I said, what are we doing? And you told me what you're doing. And, and I said, that's, that's it. fine. And I explained to you why I need documentation from you, just to verify who you are. Okay, but that's you don't it. need to verify who I am. I unfortunately I have, do. Yes. No, I have the right to privacy in you, public. You do, to a certain degree. Yeah, okay. and this is within that degree. Yes. Yes. But, the, but again, if we're investigating it for suspicious because somebody called it in, it's not like we it just... It doesn't matter if somebody called it in. Yes, it does. Okay, so if you're outside on your property mowing your lawn and somebody says you're suspicious and the police come by, you have to give them your ID? To verify that you live there? Yeah. No, you don't. Yes, it's you It's your do. property. Right, well, you're entitled to think whatever you want. I'm entitled okay. to follow the law. Officer Moschella argues that Mr. State needs to provide his ID because he was reported as a quote-unquote suspicious person. However, as we discussed earlier in this episode, New Jersey does not have a stop and identify statute. So the only time a police officer can demand that an individual show their identification is when they have been stopped while driving a motor vehicle or when the officer is issuing a court summons. Additionally, even states that do have stop and identify statutes cannot require individuals to identify themselves for simply being considered a quote-unquote suspicious person. Person. In the 1979 case of Brown v. Texas, the Supreme Court invalidated a conviction based on a Texas stop and identify statute because the officer lacked any reasonable suspicion to believe that the defendant was engaged or had engaged in criminal conduct when he demanded ID. Rather, the officer testified that he stopped the defendant because the situation, quote, looked suspicious, and the court concluded that it violated the Fourth Amendment to detain him and require him to identify himself under these circumstances. However, in the 2004 case of Heibel v. 6th Judicial District Court of Nevada, the Supreme Court upheld an obstruction conviction under a stop-and-identify law that required a suspect to disclose their name during a valid Terry stop that was supported by a reasonable, articulable suspicion that the suspect was engaged in criminal activity. In the 1989 case of United States v. Sokolow, the Supreme Court explained that for a Terry stop to be valid, quote, the officer must be able to articulate something more than an inchoate and unparticularized suspicion or hunch. The Fourth Amendment requires requires some minimal level of objective justification for making the stop. This means that officers cannot conduct Terry stops on individuals simply because they are reported as suspicious or engaged in unusual behavior. Rather, an officer must be able to point to specific facts that created a suspicion of criminal activity. In this situation, and in Mr. State's hypothetical scenario involving an individual mowing their own lawn, it seems clear that there would not be sufficient evidence for an officer to support the particularized reasonable suspicion of criminal activity that is necessary to conduct a Terry stop. And even if there was enough evidence to support reasonable suspicion, under New Jersey law, they could not be arrested for refusing to identify themselves. Which yeah. is, okay, and again, I'm, if we're investigating this because somebody called in and is a suspicious person, okay. we just need to verify who you are and identify who you are. And what's, what statute is suspicious? What law am I breaking? Sir, I'm, again, I'm not, I already went over this with you. I don't need to go And you haven't detail. justified yourself yet. I, I do. And listen, again, if okay. you fail well, to I, provide your documentation, you can be placed under arrest for you think so? Oh, I know so. You know so. So I'm going to ask you again, can you please provide your documentation? Okay. Otherwise, you are going to be placed under arrest for obstruction. I do not it's have very, identification very on me. Well, so then you lied to me because when I first asked you if you had a, okay. uh, identification on you, you told me, yes, I do. Oh, I have fingerprints and retinas. No, that's that's incorrect. I asked you, do you have documentation? Do you have identification? I do not. You can go back into your video recorder and you can verify. No. Do you have ID? I always have ID. Okay, can you provide that? No. Okay, so who are you then? Because we're going to have to verify who you I'm are. I'm not answering any questions. And here's the other problem. Now you lied to me. So now I have a concern as to whether you're being truthful and honest with me. Do you understand? Okay, well, and you're not I being truthful and honest with me because you haven't quoted a law yet. I'm required to show sir, you I did. I already explained to you what I need to supervisor. do. Supervisor. If you fail to, there's actually a supervisor right there. Okay. Okay? And I don't need to have a supervisor anyway because I asked you for who you are. Well, I'm you asking for a supervisor. Who you are, and I, told I did you, not lie about who I, I am. I explained to you what happens if you fail to provide documentation. Now, if I find out you're lying to me, now you could be charged with hindering. Do we have a sergeant? giving failed documentation. When Officer Moschella claims that Mr. State could be charged with hindering if he lied to the officer about whether or not he had identification on his person, this is not consistent with how courts have interpreted New Jersey's hindering statute. Under Section 2C29-3 of the New Jersey Statutes, quote, a person commits an offense if, with purpose to hinder his own detention, apprehension, investigation, prosecution, conviction, or punishment, he gives false information to a law enforcement officer. Although it is arguable that a lie about whether an individual has an ID in their possession could be considered an attempt to hinder their own investigation, according to the model jury instructions for the hindering statute, for an individual to be found guilty, the state must prove that they knew they could or might be charged with a certain criminal offense and lied in order to hinder any state 
stage of the investigation or prosecution of that offense. Applying this statute, a court would likely conclude that even if Mr. State had lied about having identification, he was not guilty of hindering because there was no criminal offense he could have been charged with. However, under different circumstances, an individual could be charged with hindering for lying about having identification on their person, or making other false statements to the police with the intent to avoid arrest or punishment for a crime. For example, in the 2013 case of State v. Odd, the Superior Court of the New Jersey Appellate Division upheld a hindering conviction against an individual who, when asked for his name and identifying information while being arrested for another offense, provided a fictitious name, a social security number, and date of birth. Therefore, under New Jersey law, lying to an officer can sometimes be grounds for a hindering charge. But there are many situations where providing false information to an officer would not be considered hindering. Uh, no. What's going on, sir? Two? Okay. okay. What's going on? So what is your name and what is your information? I'm not answering any questions. Personal information. Okay, well then you're going to be placed under arrest for obstruction. And what law is that, sir? Sergeant? He doesn't need to explain it to you. Well, he does actually. He actually does. So let's find out. Can I just ask you what you're doing here? Yes, sir. I'm in okay. public taking pictures of a public building, okay. expressing my First Amendment right to freedom of press. Okay. I'm here to actually file a complaint. Okay. You have that right. You have all those rights. You just, you just Thank mentioned. you. Well, he appears to okay. tell me that I don't. Now, just, just so you know, there are areas of this building that are posted. Absolutely. Off limits. Yep, like all the right. back of that parking so lot there. So it says restricted have, area. You can't go back there. Those areas or, or, or video those areas. Absolutely. Other than that, if you want to walk around with your camera, you can walk around with your camera. And I don't need to show ID to do that. You don't have to show ID right now. No, sir. All right, sir. How's that? Well, that's incorrect, uh, 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 actually, in that respect. Oh, is it? Okay. Is it? So your sergeant's you wrong. So your sergeant's wrong? What we were going to. So no, your we're sergeant's... Not, we're not going to get to an argument here. Sure. So we're all set, all right? Because I was just threatened with arrest for not providing identification. It's a violation of the Fourth Amendment. All right, sir. But now we're clear on what's going on, right? Is he? Are we all clear? Is he clear? Because I'm clear and you're clear. Sure. Everybody, everybody here is clear, sir. Very good, sir. Right. Thank so you. Continue what you're doing. I appreciate your help. You have a good day. You too. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Have a nice day, officer. You too, sir. Have a great Hope you learned something today. After Sergeant Ruiz allowed Mr. State to leave, he continued to film for several minutes before returning and asking Officer Mosquela for his name and badge number. Officer Mosquela refused to provide this information, but Sergeant Ruiz quickly stepped in to provide identifying information for Officer Mosquela and himself. On January 8, 2019, Toms River Police Chief Mitch Little addressed the incident on the department's Facebook page, stating that, quote, The matter is being investigated and addressed as any other incidents that have come to our attention. Any actions by members of this department found to be against law or policy will be corrected. It is unclear what the results of the investigation were and whether any disciplinary action was taken against Officer Mosquela. Overall, Officer Mosquela gets an F for misrepresenting New Jersey's identification laws, baselessly accusing Mr. State of violating multiple irrelevant statutes, and for displaying a fundamental misunderstanding of reasonable suspicion and the First Amendment. It is clear from the video that Officer Mosquela was operating under several misconceptions about New Jersey statutes and the concept of reasonable suspicion, and it is difficult to say whether this was due to a lack of training or an intentional effort to force Mr. State's compliance. Regardless of the root cause, Officer Mosquela's conduct and rationalizations were contrary to everything that he should have been taught during his tenure at the police academy. There is no doubt that he was in dire need of more training before interacting with the public again. It should also be noted that a use of Force database operated by force.nj.com reported that Officer Mosquela used force more often than the average officer in the state, and that the individuals he arrested were also more likely to be injured than individuals arrested by other officers in the department. Considering this information with the conduct that he displayed during his interaction with Mr. State, it is relatively safe to assume that Officer Mosquela is a danger to the public at large, and a significant liability to his department and the city of Toms River. If Officer Mosquela had arrested Mr. State, then he likely likely would have been the subject of a serious lawsuit, and there is certainly an argument to be made that the city of Toms River and the Toms River Police Department bore some degree of liability for failing to properly train him, especially considering that Officer Mosquela had already displayed a pattern of behavior that favored an unnecessarily higher volume of use of force incidents. This interaction highlights the notion that there are many faults within the current structure of training for members of law enforcement, and it is extremely difficult to understand how Officer Mosquela graduated from the police academy Academy with such a lack of basic knowledge regarding New Jersey law and civilian rights. Mr. State gets an A. 
for remaining calm and collected throughout the interaction, demonstrating a thorough understanding of the relevant New Jersey statutes and the concept of reasonable suspicion, and for challenging Officer Muskella's conduct without becoming rude or vulgar. From the very beginning of the interaction, Mr. State demonstrated a deeper understanding of New Jersey law and general legal precedents than Officer Muskella, and he managed to articulate his points in a stern but respectful manner. Mr. State also made a point to mention that he was exercising his First Amendment rights during the encounter. This is important, because it not only offers a legitimate explanation for his quote-unquote suspicious behavior, but it also directly implicates the protections offered by the First Amendment in the event that his intentions were called into question by a court. Courts have concluded in the past that First Amendment protections are not necessarily granted to filming that is for personal use or does not serve a significant public interest. And verbalizing the notion that you're exercising your First Amendment rights can be a major point of consideration for any case involving free speech. I commend Mr. State for maintaining his composure in the face of Officer Moskela's threats and for displaying a clear understanding of civilian rights. Be sure to give Police State New Jersey's channel your support. You can find a link in the description below. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.